if you think something might be wrong, be proactive because there's probably a bigger issue that's either already happening or it will happen. <laughs> They have a mini replica. It looks like a little dog RV or something like that. With, with fully functioning and working uh, hydraulic jacks, water pump, wall control system. She put a tub. Look at this, Ainsley. Damn, there's a chance. Don't refuse it. Get used to it. I'm through old ways now. I'm through with it. So get used to it, honey. What's up, fellow journeyers? We've officially made it to the Grand Design <laughs> Repair Campground. This is where you kind of wait if you're having repairs done or something like that. And as you know, last video, um, we started having issues with this bad boy right here. That sounds not good to me. Oh. So Grand Design's gonna check it out and see what's going on. So I don't know yet what the plan is. We don't know how long we're gonna be here. We don't know if this is a simple fix. Now you've got what we've seen at least three different kinds of slides on RVs. We've got the Schwintech, which is the one we have messing up. You have hydraulic slides, which are what all of our other slides are. And then you have the cable slides, which we had in our open range. And um, there may be other brands that use it too. So the fix I read about from Lippert is that you slide it all the way out, bring it in eight to eight, 10 inches and do that multiple times. And the system is supposed to realign itself. Um, so this side is probably, I don't know what, three inches-ish different from the other side. I'm gonna go all the way out with this. Now we're gonna come in a little bit. Popping loose is not solid. Okay, here's what I've discovered. I should have done this to start with probably, but I went outside and measured how far the slide came out and they were both even. I thought, well, that's weird. So it turns out it's not the Schwintech is not actually out of alignment. The, uh, the bed is out of alignment and I don't even know how that happens or how I get that back. Well, that's a ball bearing off of that rail. So that can't be good. Totally different issue. <sighs> but it's closer. Just processing, because 7 a.m. is 6 a.m. Marissa's processing. <laughs> We're also here for meetings, meetings with Grand Design, meetings with Lippert, meetings with some of the companies in the area. So we had all those booked, all those plans. We have a very tight schedule over here. So, but we appreciate Grand Design working us in. Uh, they're gonna send out a guy in the morning, it's late afternoon, who's like, we can start digging into this tonight, but I'd rather wait till the morning. But here's what I think I know. I measure the Schwintex. You think you know? I think I know, that's why I'm you here. You know Grand you know? No, that's why we're here at Grand Design, because I don't know, <laughs> no, I think I know. Um, I measure the Schwintex distances, they look the same. I get the gut. Cause that's what you want here is gut, right? When you got somebody working on your stuff, that is the bed that's moving. So something on the bed, I don't think it's attached right or it's come off the rollers or something is going on with the bed. And he said, I talked to Mike. Mike knows, he doesn't think he knows. He actually knows what he's doing. Said that if it's the bed, it's not a huge deal. If it's the Schwintech, that could be a big deal. <laughs> Having to get it off the rails and the whole deal. Grand Design, they're gonna come out here tomorrow morning, early, we have a meeting um, in the morning. We'll probably just leave this here, go to the meetings and come back and do all the things. But. They told me 7 a.m., which is 6 a.m. our time. Oh. Yesterday morning we left. Marissa is excited about 6 a.m. <laughs> having. Y'all know I love mornings, <laughs> early mornings. It just takes me a minute. I love it. So when I, I'll be doing my run and some of the work, and I'll welcome them in. And, uh, yeah, we wake up in the morning and Nathan's like <laughs> telling me all his life goals and plans. And I'm like, I haven't even had my coffee. Wait just a minute. And it's like this with anything in an RV. We've shown this. And the trim piece was supposed to look like this, but Stuart noticed it come down over a half an inch, which is not normal. And we thought, well, maybe water had gotten inside of it and caused the wood to expand and was pushing it down. But then once Stuart opened it up, he saw that there was more than that going on. There wasn't enough water that damaged the wood. The wood wasn't expanding. It was actually the frame itself. So this is what the steel frame does while the jack is up to simulate, you know, if it's on the truck or there's pressure on the nose, you can see it sort of digging into the aluminum part of the frame right there. All right, go ahead. Oh, there you go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and that's what it looks like when the pressure is taken off of the jack. Yeah. Total. <laughs> if you think something might be wrong, be proactive because there's probably a bigger issue that's either already happening or it will happen. So my fear is if, I, if we don't get this bed fixed right, it's putting unneeded stress on the rails. That sounds like the human body. 
Yeah, basically, yeah. So we're gonna be here at least tonight. We might just to make it easier, might be here a couple nights. But they have these service sites. You got, uh, it's not full hookups, water and electric. I think they do have a place to dump on the other side if you have to have it. We're going to full hookup campground after this at some point. <laughs> so we'll see, we'll figure it out. What are you guys building? That's a really taco truck. A taco truck? But, uh, taco truck does sound good. Or weird. I wish it was a real taco truck. So I'm clearing out underneath the bed because I know it's going to have to happen anyways. These are these are really cool. So I have the GB70 or 90, something like that, that said it would start a six cylinder diesel engine. Turns out my batteries died while we were going to Alaska and we got back and it did not start a six cylinder diesel engine, like it said. So I upgraded the GB150, but these things are awesome. It's always there, it's always charged as an RV or I have a backup battery source, which is never a bad thing. So you don't, you don't need the battery cables, you don't need all that stuff. You just hook this up to the battery, boom, done. And then we use this in the harvest hose because we don't have any power and um, pretty cool. It's got a little clamp. You can hang it if you want to with this hook. Totally battery powered. This really makes a difference, just having a tiny breeze and you get the fan noise right in your face. So we just clamp these down next to where we sleep. It's great, it works. Who knows? Um, could do a lot of whole gadget video of stuff that's underneath the bed. <laughs> Might be a cool episode. What's under LJMJ's bed? I don't even know what's under LJMJ's bed. <laughs> Did you know this is plant seven over here behind us and then this is i'm assuming another plant over here i don't know if they're doing the inspections like moving things back and forth did you know it's about 4 30 in the morning it may even be four i don't know it was early they start moving rigs back and forth and back and forth between these two facilities it's it's kind of neat it's like a little dance it's a neat thing to see and that's really the goal of this video is is we want to feel and immerse ourselves in the elkhart experience elkhart is known as the rv capital of the world like we want to immerse ourselves in that and just kind of be in awe of the whole process there is a lot behind the scenes from the time you go to a dealer you pick out your rv you buy your rv and you take it home and for probably like 95 percent of you the large majority of that happens in the elkhart indiana area from south bay yeah you're okay. right so about four yeah, years yeah about four or five years So we spent today, it was a hectic day. You know, we woke up this morning, I don't know, 3.30, 4.30. This is not a quiet place to get a good night's rest, but it is efficient and a great place to park if you're gonna have things worked on with Grand Design. So we needed the slide worked on. We also wanted to go and show you behind the scenes of a couple of these really cool spots, some things going on in the RV industry. The first of which was a warehouse tour from Lippert. So the C-Racks are for plastics, brakes, jacks, steps, hubs. It's almost like walking into an Amazon facility or something, <laughs> seeing everything going on. All the If you're a process kind of person like me, it was exciting to see all the different processes going on behind the scenes at this facility to help get these parts out as quickly and efficiently as possible. They have a huge call center. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Within the call center, they showed us this. They have a mini replica. It looks like a little dog RV or something like that, but they have a tiny little RV with, with fully functioning and working um, hydraulic jacks, water pump, water control system. Like it, it, It's like a just it's a miniature RV right there in the call center that if they're talking to somebody if they need to they can physically look at it move it and talk to people can you actually get it to auto level yeah it control does, system it does fully <laughs> automatic it will fully auto level that's great and it is fully functional <laughs> takes the water pump oh yeah that's great <laughs> tv goes up and down slide out goes in and out what? everything on it <laughs> that's great you got a window too yeah so we had a, a custom built entry door that was uh, made for it. We just had it miniaturized. Oh, that's a legit, yeah, with a handle and everything. Yeah, it is a miniature. I don't know why, I'm just thinking there's gotta be something really funny you could patent with that. I don't know. It's... Employees actually has one of these at their house. No. Oh, everybody has this at their house? So this one is a little over the top, but literally if any of our agents are say, hey, I don't understand our TPMS system. I don't understand how it works. Okay, I'm gonna get you one, add it to your mock-up. They're finding ways for people to work from home, but still be able to physically have some of these things and these processes in place where they can help people no matter where they're at, no matter what they're doing. It's been a long day with the kids, but it's been a very interesting day. But something else super interesting that happened while we were gone doing these tours with Lippert. Bed and the slide um, has been fixed on our RV. They fixed everything on site. Um, I think they kind of jacked this up. And the big thing that was wrong was that slide and or the bed had come off the roller. If you see this roller right here, they said the bed some sort of support for the roller had broken and the bed was not even being supported by the roller anymore and that was causing extra movement in the bed which in turn was causing extra stress on the slides which in turn is what concerned me probably the most is that i didn't want the slide to break <laughs> in the middle of nowhere and have a hard time getting it in or out uh, the bed is now when it comes in and out is now evenly coming in and out like it should um, and it's not sliding all over the place and putting this weird torque 
tension on the slide like it was before. So I think we're good to go. What are you doing, Nizzle? What's I gonna say? Less is more unless it's kindness or sleep or toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love it. We have made our way about 30 minutes down the road. Well, Lippert said they were doing a barbecue dinner tonight. And uh, if you know us, uh, we can't turn down free food. So <laughs> we're here uh, in the Lippert parking lot of Plant 85 for number one, for some barbecue. Uh, for number two, they also want to give us a tour of Plant 85. Now, each of these plants, they have like their own little area where they do prototypes and the new things are coming out. Uh, Plant 85, they actually make the Schwintech slides. We showed you this video. They make a lot of things from the aluminum. They also make the hydraulic jacks that are probably on your RV if you have hydraulic jacks. And one of the cool jacks they've got coming out is called the base camp. This body is going to be both your 8K jacks in your rear and your 14k landing gear wow, so. the way that we get that extra lift power with our 14k it'll be a chrome rod instead of aluminum rod that's so all solid okay. steel chrome rod and this new jack is now shipping out and starting to come out you'll probably start seeing it more often in the next few months it's just a good looking jack <laughs> If you could say that about a jack. And number three, we're here as a part of what is really the main reason for why we're here at Plan 85. We were told that they're doing, this is actually a barbecue appreciation dinner for all the employees working here. And on a day-to-day -day basis, they get to see, you know, the rails and the slides and the jacks, but they don't get to see the end result of what is built with all those parts. And so they thought it'd be pretty cool, and we did too, if the employees could see the end result of what they're building on a rig like ours. And so we're here with our fifth wheel, letting people walk through and see what's been built and how it's been built. Some of the parents are coming by and saying, look, I built that and the kids are like, ah, <laughs> it's really cool to see the look on their faces when they see the end result of what they've done. And I know we're thankful for that too. We are not the only rig here that they're getting to see the inside of. Courtney with the Flipping Nomad is also here with her Keystone Montana. And if you've never seen this RV and what she did with the interior, it is incredible. Look wow. at that, Isley. <laughs> I have never seen that before. That is amazing. I don't even know where to start. Like, it's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on. There, there is, like, um, yeah. Oh my goodness, wow. So normally in this floor plan, there's an island that has a sink in it, and we took the island out for paint with every intention of putting it back in. And when we <laughs> took it out, I was like, uh-uh, it is not going back in. It, yeah, yeah, it makes it massive. so this is, much bigger. Yeah, this is not And what I love about it. it is everything is fully accessible with the slides in now that the island's gone, which That's was true. kind of an unintentional benefit. So we rebuilt this cabinet to house the sink because normally the sink is in the island. Did you say this sink? It's, it's a gold sink. sink. It's a gold sink. How incredible is, is that? Is that real gold? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you want it to be real gold? I wish. <laughs> and then this um, is a it's an ultrasonic water vapor fireplace and um, you can actually see it a lot better from the other side. And the It makes a crackling noise. That's so uh -huh. cool. Does it do any heat too? Um, so the, the technology has an option to have like a space heater element in it. This particular one does not. What if I trick my friend by doing this? <laughs> I'd be like, ah! This is super cool. I don't know if I ever would have thought of just doing a projector screen. What was up here yeah, before? so normally in this floor plan, um, there's a little bit of storage and a little bit of storage on either side and then a TV that lifts up out of the cabinet. Um, but we just wanted to open the space up. So we did a projector screen and then the projector is mounted down here under the fireplace. Um, which I really like because I don't really watch TV that much so I can just run the screen up and then there's a giant window back there too so run the screen up run the shade up and I have my window back uh, she's fine, fine. She's fine all right I don't it. think that's supposed to be for that Hensley. come on oh my I don't think you'll ever get me out of here <laughs> she put a tub Look at this, Insley! A tub and a see-through fireplace into the bedroom. Have you seen well, shower, Marissa? Uh, uh, oh, wow! That's a bad reason for that because the tub is actually made out of acrylic, so it only weighs 85 pounds. Wow. Nuh uh Yeah. So I have a question. Are you saying I can put this in my RV? 
That there's a possibility? You're saying there's a chance. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! Saying there's a chance. There's a chance. The hardest part will actually be getting it in the RV, which is why there's a window here. That's the main purpose. Did you add, was this already so here or you added it? We added it. You added you the window. Added, we put our couch through the window and I thought I was uh, yeah. crazy, but yeah. you added a window you to put your window. toe through yes. it. Wow. Otherwise we would have had to tear this uh, entire wall apart yeah. because the tub could not have made this corner to get in. Wow. So I was like, we'll just put a window in, it's fine. Thank you, Grand Design. Thank you, Lippert. Thank you, Courtney with the Flipping Nomad for giving us an inside look of what goes on behind the RVs and the factories and the warehouses. Really do appreciate it. So if you enjoy getting an inside look at what goes on behind the scenes, this is a Grand Design Solitude. We've done a tour with Grand Design, the Solitude Factory. I'm gonna link to that video. Pretty incredible what's underneath the shell of what we see on the outside. And all the things that go on behind the scenes to make an RV like this happen. Well, that's our journey for this week. Until next week's video, 